Hey guys, Sam here at NA Studios. Thanks in advance for watching. Today I want to take a look at real time versus offline bouncing in Logic and whether or not it actually makes a difference, whether or not you can hear a discernible difference in the two different bounces. Now, real time bouncing typically is for when we're going through outboard gear or when there's something in the kind of real physical world outside the computer that we need to take into account first. Obviously, offline bouncing, you're not going to be able to go through that outboard gear. So offline bouncing tends to be good for quick bouncing, where it's just in the box. Real time is going through analog gear. But that word analog comes into play quite heavily here. It's not what I thought. Or rather, it is what I thought, but it's an extension of what I thought. It's not quite as simple as meets the eye. Let's check it out. So first off then, I've got two bounces. Pretty obviously, you can see this first one was done offline. The second one was done in real time. Let's just take a listen to the two of them side by side, see if we can actually hear any discernible differences. Then we will null test them and see if they're exactly the same or not. So here it is, first one. Sounds pretty similar. There's no real discernible differences there, to my ear anyway. They sound very, very similar. But the interesting thing comes when you create a null test from them. So what we've done is we've taken the uh, second one and we've gone to a game plugin and then phase inverted both channels, the left and the right. So if these were exactly identical, then we would get absolute silence. But in this case, we don't. This is what we get. we get loads of artifacts. Now, pretty quickly, I kind of worked out that, all right, in the actual mix, I've got loads of, uh, should we say, semi-random plugins. Not random, but ones that aren't exactly the same every time. So this is things like um, drum triggering software. I've got Trigger 2 here. And part of the beauty of this kind of software is that it does this round robin style thing where just because it played that specific sample the first time on the first go round, it won't necessarily do that again. So the snares are going to be different. The kicks are going to be different. Anything that you've got triggered. And then I remembered, well, I've also got a fairly heavy amount of processing going on here from analog style plugins, which are notoriously non-linear. So they're not exactly going to be the same every single time. I've got some Slate Digital stuff going on here, and there's also some uh, Brainworks, the Focusrite channel. But there's also some reverbs, which aren't always going to be exactly the same, especially if they're modelled off, you know, real life spaces. There's going to be some kind of logic in there which is going to change things. So I thought, all right, let's try and circumnavigate this a little bit. And here's what I did. So I thought, all right, let's try and make it so we can null test it. Let's try and make it so that it does actually null and give us silence. And I got it so it did, almost. Let's have a look. So what I did was I stemmed everything out. Essentially everything in the mix that didn't go to a bus, everything that went to the stereo out, they were my stems, if you want to call it that. Um, and then I just exported all of those stems. Uh, if you want to see how you can do that, then check out the video in the description. And that kind of created my entire mix. So that was all these stems of my mix. So when I played those stems, it would be the same as playing the mix. Importantly, I was just exporting this. So this was kind of doing it offline, if you want. Um, but then critically, when I'm then bouncing again, I'm doing it real time versus offline and there's no analog processing going on there. So it should know. Well, it does sort of. Let's have a look. So these are my buses. Then I've got drums, guitar solos, reverbs, etc. And then these are the uh, the outputs. So we've got mix offline buses, mix real time buses. So if we play them both together with this one again, phase inverted, then we should hear nothing. Looks like nothing to me. We've got channel, we've got stuff going on the channels, and then we've got absolutely nothing on the main fader. But this is where things got really interesting, because I thought to myself, well, okay, I can see nothing on the main fader, but just for, just for giggles, let's do a bounce in place, and let's see if it's in fact absolutely nothing. So I went to these two, I pressed Command and B, bounce in place. And this is with the game plugin engaged, remember? So this is going to be nulling. And it looks like we've got absolutely zero here. So if I just solo this one, there's nothing going on there. Except when you click it 
and you crank the game right up to 30, there's some stuff going on there. If we play it, we can't actually hear anything. There's nothing actually audibly there. And if you look, none of these kind of spikes really tally up with any of the peaks that are going on in the actual file. Let's just find one. Look, so there's a snare hit there, snare hit there, but these ones don't particularly tally up. It's not as if they're like every single hit something goes on. Because what happened was I did this the first time and I actually had it clipping on the main output. And I did it and it didn't know. And I was like, whoa, okay, this is this is weird. The offline bouncing doesn't know. Then I realized what was going on. It's like, okay, okay, it, it probably does if I do it again. So I did it again and it did this. And I couldn't work it out. So I've got one with it clipping as well and it did it as well. So I've done it a bit quieter this time, look. And then this is the bouncing place of that. If I then turn that up, then we've still got that nonsense going on. So I thought, well, I can't hear it in here, but Isotope RX is quite a good kind of cover all thing. Like if there's something in there, that will find it. So I clicked on it, pressed Shift and W, and it opened it up in RX. I could see nothing because it hadn't got that gain added. So what I did, I went up to gain here and I added absolutely loads, 60 dB. Let's go render and let's go render again. 120 dB later, we've got this kind of nonsense. And if we play it, There's something there. It's just a load of spikes. Now, I don't know what that is. I, I can't work it out because it's not actually related to anything that's going on in the null test, in the bounce process. It just happens when you bounce in place. If I actually just bounce these two mixes now, so here it is, this is the result of bouncing these two together and null, so it should be absolutely zero. Let's just check it is. Absolutely nothing there. Then when we bring it into our X, if we bring it up by 120 dB, it's there, but it's different. I don't understand this. I don't understand what's going on. So it kind of sounds the same. But again, it doesn't really relate to any kind of peaks that are going on in the actual audio. It's not like it's clipping. It's not like it's just the remnants of some kind of clipping going on. And in Logic, when I'm actually bouncing this, I'm going at full quality. There's there's literally nothing going on here at all. So no dithering. The file format is it's interleave, so it's just, just stereo. Um, sample rate is exactly what it was recorded at. 24-bit is exactly what it was recorded at. Wave is exactly what it was recorded at. So I'm doing everything exactly the same. I'm doing no conversions, no anything, but I'm getting all that nonsense. So the upshot of it is that real-time and offline bouncing, in reality, it makes no difference. It really doesn't make a difference unless you're coming out into the real world with outboard gear and actually coming through some actual real life wires. Then it makes a difference because you can't do it offline. Um, if you were to do it, then all your attack and release times would be wrong on compressors, wouldn't they? Because it would be going through too fast. There you go. It's only really different when you're going through analog model plugins or anything that has an element of randomness in it. Randomness, new word. Then it's going to make a difference because it's not going to be the same every single time. But other than that, I shouldn't worry too much about it. I've gone too deep into this, really. I shouldn't have cared as much as I did with this whole bouncing and bouncing in place. But it's interesting to know that 120 dB down in Logic, there's some weirdness going on. Whether that's going to make a difference to your mix, I don't know. It's not, but it's interesting to know. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you again soon. Take care.